Space is brimming with hidden gems. If we could just extract the riches from the rocks and asteroids, we could give each person on the planet a whopping $100 billion. Isn't this incredible? According to a statement made by the Texas Senator, Ted Cruz, he predicted that, that the, the first, first trillion will be made in space. This was shortly after a bill to increase NASA's budget for 2018 was approved into law. Peter Diamandis, the originator of the X Prize competition to promote technological advancements, made a similar prediction in 2008. As for now, those trillionaires who make their I riches from space, both he and Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist and TV host, reckon that it'll be done by mining asteroids. The first trillionaire you'll ever be is the person who mines asteroids for their natural resources. I'm just saying. Nobody may legally own an asteroid, but the U.S. Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, which was enacted into law in 2015, recognizes the right of U.S. citizens to own space resources they collect and support commercial exploration and usage of asteroids. Similar legislation has been approved in Luxembourg, and other countries may follow suit. In fact, the country that gets its regulations right could end up with the most lucrative space business. After all, if your space mining corporation is making billions of pounds in space, the money will be spent here on Earth for the foreseeable future. If you're curious to know how valuable asteroids are, have a look at the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, for example. There are millions of asteroids located in this belt that are estimated to be worth over 700 quintillion dollars. This is due to the fact that they contain enormous quantities of raw elements that are extremely scarce on Earth's surface. Silver, gold, palladium, and most crucially, platinum are examples of these precious metals. A company called Planetary Resources estimated in 2012 that platinum mined from a modest 30 diameter asteroid may be valued between 25 and 50 billion dollars at the current market value. This is one asteroid giving more platinum than humanity has ever mined in history. Iron nickel ore is another major raw material. A huge asteroid with a diameter of one kilometer might contain two or three times the total global production of iron nickel ore. And 16 Psyche, a very large asteroid, will satisfy the entire global need for nickel iron for several million years. In 2011, UW-158 is another asteroid with a lot of platinum. In July 2015, it passed quite close to Earth and was predicted to contain 90 million tons of platinum in its core, as well as other precious metal reserves. The asteroid was worth between $300 billion and $5.4 trillion. With statistics like these on the table for a single asteroid, you just have to see the possibilities of asteroid mining. But how many of these asteroids could be suitable for mining? Martin Elvis, a Harvard University astrophysicist with an interest in asteroid mining, devised an algorithm in 2013 to predict the number of asteroids that could be suitable for mining candidates with an existing technology. The equation takes into account the number of asteroids within reach of today's rocket ships, the possibility that they are worth mining, whether mining them is technically viable, and whether mining them would be profitable. Elvis calculated that there are roughly 10 potentially metal-rich asteroids and 18 adequately water-rich asteroids within our reach when he initially ran his figures in 2013. So far, nearly 15,000 near-Earth asteroids with close orbits to Earth have been identified so far. The 162173 Ryugu has been identified as the most valuable of these. It's nearly a kilometer wide and worth an estimated $83 billion. The last time this asteroid was close to Earth was December 29th, 2020, and the time next will be on June 3rd, 2025. So anyone who starts a corporation between now and then and manages to set up a mining operation on it could make profits of tens of billions of dollars. If this is successful, it might serve as a stepping stone to the asteroid's belt's far more valuable asteroids. There is, however, an issue. It costs a lot of money to get something into space. One important cash flow concern confronts asteroid firms. If there are riches in space, the miners will need reliable funding to get there in the first place. In an interview, Jeff Cargill, a former U.S. Geological Survey geologist, 
who is now a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute at Tucson, Arizona, said, I think we are all overestimating what could be done. There has yet to be any commercial mining reconnaissance, and the idea of sending astronauts to scout near-Earth asteroids now seems archaic. Cargill stated, I don't believe sending astronauts to an asteroid makes a whole lot of economic sense. He claims that when it comes to mining water, iron, nickel, as well as the platinum group metals from asteroids, there isn't much that robotics can't handle. The introduction of small, low-cost cubescents could be a big boost to the space mining sector. He points out that the most of these new type spacecrafts are spin-stabilized and don't stay long. However, he believes that the core concept of having relatively inexpensive spacecraft that can be mass-built is advantageous for future asteroid mining attempts. That's why Amara Grops, an astrophysicist who launched the Latvian organization Baltics in Space and hosts the biannual Asteroid Science Intersections with InSpace Mine Engineering Conference, ASIME, believes communication is crucial. She explains, everyone is struggling in their own way, so it helps if we can communicate and share and make better use of our own resources. Asteroid miners' aspirations have been bolstered by SpaceX's creation of increasingly powerful rockets, which means humans can fly further into space. Graps feels that bridging the gap between scientists and business people is critical. The objective of asteroid scientists is to provide scientific support to the companies by answering some of their most pressing asteroid science concerns. The new SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, on the other hand, cost $90 million per launch using the cheapest means available at the time. As a result, asteroid mining businesses must persuade potential investors that their claims of immense riches in space are credible and attainable. Before a firm can reach an asteroid, it must fill the gap in its funds with other sources of revenue. As a result, the business model for asteroid mining businesses are currently far more earthbound. For example, the corporation Planetary Resources, which employs its mining expertise on Earth, is still dependent on affluent bankers. The company laid off approximately 70 staff last year after missing a fundraising milestone. As Earth's resources become increasingly scarce, humans will one day take advantage of the vast resources available in space, putting an end to the concept of scarcity. Our society's first trillionaire will be the first individual to take advantage of it, and it might just be you.